Hi everybody, it's Dr. Campbell and I'm back to show my biology students today how to take Cornell notes, Cornell style, for their biology notes for the Miller and Levine uh, biology. Um, the reason why I teach biology students and actually all my high school students to take Cornell notes is because it's a way to learn how to take a note method uh, for particularly high school, but also for when you go to college. We find that many students do not know how to take notes by the time they get to college. They are not taught in high school. So I require all my high school classes to take Cornell notes. So they've learned it, at least for the textbook, but you can also use the same method um, when you are trying to do uh, lectures. Um, so I'm going to show you the basic way for using a textbook, and hopefully you'll find this helpful. So first of all, I'm just going to show you how we set up this. Um, I have a ruler, and I'm using a marker today. You should not be using a marker, but I'm using a marker so you can see a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to mark down about, I have the red line here, and about an inch over. Um, I'm going to mark a line down, and then in your notebook you would do it with a pencil. And then I'm going to mark a line across the top. And then I'm also going to go down, and I'm going to have about four spaces at the bottom of my notebook, and I'm going to mark a note here, mark a line here. All right, so why do I do it like this? In the traditional Cornell method, this is divided up for a couple of reasons. Here we put the title, and in my case, I also put the page number and the date so I know what's going on. Here is where I put traditionally vocab, or questions. Here is my major note taking and bullets. And down here is the summary. And that's how you traditionally set up a Cornell notebook style. You can actually buy Cornell notebook paper, um, which can get somewhat expensive, but it's nice if you have it in a notebook already. You, you don't have to draw your format. Um, I will tell you that I have a number of students who use this method, and when they've gone to college, they found this to be very helpful for them. So I will show you again how I do this for biology. So I'm going to turn the page. I'm going to set up my biology class. And the other thing that you might want to know is I use highlighters, this gel highlighter that's like this. I find they do not soak through uh, when I'm trying to highlight text, so I'm going to use that. Um, I'm also going to write in ink today as I set this up. Some people prefer to write in pencil. I'm going to write in ink so it's a little bit easier for you to see. And if you choose to write in ink, um, make sure that your uh, highlighter is not going to smear it. Um, that's kind of important. So now I've set up my notebook already. I know that my title is going to be at the top. I'm going to write on there with my marker today, but normally I would write with my uh, pencil. I'm going to call it 2.2 properties of water because I, and again, I'm writing this very large because um, I'm recording this. I'm doing pages 40 to 44 in the text, and I'm, I'll put the date here. So I'll just write date. Okay, and I will put the date there. All right. Then, um, one thing that you might want to know that's interesting about the Miller book is in the Miller book there are key questions over here. Those are the key ideas that you need to know for your chapter test. And right below that is vocabulary words. So, you know, before I said we put key questions and key ideas down here, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to put my marker away, and I'm going to show you with a pencil, uh, with an ink, what I'm going to do. Now this is an introduction, so I've already read that, and I'm going to start the next section. The first section is called the water molecule. So I'm going to write just that, the water molecule. And this is a major section. So I'm going to take my gel pen, and I'm going to underline it, as you can see here, the water molecule. All right? Then Right below the water molecule in the text is a key question. So I'm actually going to put that question over here because this is information I know I have to remember for the test. So I'm going to put a question mark so I don't forget it's a question I'm asking. And I'm going to write how, again, I'm taking it directly out of the text, does the structure, if I can spell today, <laughs> 
of water contribute to its unique properties. And I'm writing fairly large. I know that. Again, I'm writing for the video. Question mark again. You may not write that as large, and I understand that. Okay? Then right under here it says, Water is one of the few compounds found in a liquid state over most of the Earth's surface. Like other molecules, water, H2O, is neutral. The positive charge on its 10 protons balance out the negative charges on its 10 electrons. However, there is more to the story. So what did I understand out of that? I know I'm going to put a bullet in a bullet point and I'm going to say water and then parens. I'm going to say H2O because that's a chemical formula for water is neutral. So for that first section, there's not a lot of reading, but I know it's important. I already know it's over most of the earth, so I'm not going to add that in. Now, the next part is on polarity, so I'm going to write polarity down here. And again, I'm going to use my marker, and I'm going to underline it. Okay? And then I'm going to read here, with eight protons, water's oxygen nucleus attracts electrons more strongly than the single protons of water's two hydrogen nuclei. As a result, water's shared electrons are more likely to be found near the oxygen nucleus. Because the oxygen nucleus is at one end of the molecule, as shown in two, figure 2.6, which is here, water has a partial negative charge on one end and a, po a positive charge on the other. So I'm going to say that Number one, water is polar, because that's what's in this section. I'm also going to draw a picture, sketch note now, as we call it, of the water molecule. So this is the oxygen, and it's a bent molecule, so this would be the hydrogen. Some people call it upside Mickey Mouse ears. You can turn around the other way if you want, okay? So... That's, that's how the high, mo, water molecule looks. And I'm going to label this water molecule. So I don't forget. All right. And down here, if I'm not sure, I can say water molecule is polar. I've already written that here. So I do check the information that's in the content over here. Okay. It says the negative pole is near the oxygen atom. And the positive pole is between the hydrogen atoms. So that's important to know, and you'll find that out here pretty soon. So we're going to move on now. It says a molecule in which the charges are in unevenly distributed is said to be polar. I've already written that. Because the molecule is a bit like a magnet with two poles. The partial charges on a polar molecule are written in parentheses, minus or plus, to show they are weaker than the charges on ions such as sodium plus and chlorine negative. All right? So I haven't written a lot there. Um, if I go back and I look at some notes I practiced on earlier, I may have written a little bit more. Nope, I just said water is polar, water molecule. The one thing I forgot to add is water is neutral. So I'm going to add this right here. Water is neutral. And again, I uh, did a practice run with some other students, and that's why that's on there. Water is neutral. Now I'm actually ready for the next part on hydrogen bonding. So I'm going to write hydrogen bonding here. <clears throat> and I'm going to underline it. Again with my Sharpie. My, I'm sorry, yeah, my highlighter. Hydrogen bonding because that's important information. All right. And then I'm going to see, say, because of their po partial positive and negative charges, polar molecules such as water can attract each other. Okay, so first thing I'm going to write is polar molecules can attract each other. And that is really important in understanding the biology, the biochemistry of water. So polar molecules can attract each other. So I've written that down. And then I say the attraction between a hydrogen with a partial positive charge and another atom with a partial negative charge is known as a hydrogen bond. 
I note that this word hydrogen bond is highlighted here. I also note it's in my vocabulary here. So over here, I'm going to write hydrogen bond because it's a vocab word. And what I have my students do is we put an arrow out to the side, and that tells me I have to add the definition from the back of the book. So this, what's really nice about the Miller book is in the back is a beautiful glossary, and I can write the hydrogen bond definition right there. I know I need to know that for a test. So I have a key question, and I have a vocab word already written in. Then I'm going to continue reading. The most common partially negative atoms involved in hydrogen bonding are oxygen, nitrogen, and fluorine. That's good information to know, but it's not necessarily key information. And I know I'm more concerned about the oxygen, and I'm also concerned about the hydrogen in the hydrogen bond. So I'm going to keep reading. Hydrogen bonds are not as strong as covalent or ionic bonds. I'm going to add that. Remember, I have to leave a space for my um, definition here. So I'm going to add, I'm going to move down a little bit here, and I'm going to say hydrogen bonds. Are not as strong as covalent bonds. Okay, so I've added that in. That's an important bullet point. And then you can see here I have another key thing, a key point that I can add right here. And I also have another sketch note that I can add in here. This shows how the hydrogen bonds work. So I'm going to want to add that sketch note to my notes. So I'm going to pull up my binder, my notebook. I'm going to look at the picture. I'm not going to add all of this. I'm only going to add this little part. So I'll have my Mickey Mouse ears. There's my oxygen and my hydrogen. And so the oxygen here is negative. Right? They said that in the thing. And then I'm going to have my hydrogen here and another Mickey Mouse here. And the hydrogen is positive. So this negative and this positive together, as you can see, makes the hydrogen bond. Okay, so now I have a hydrogen bond. Now, I know I have some more information I can write down here, but let's talk about, oh, let's add this last part. I know I'm going to have to come back here, and I'm going to have to add this key point in, but I'm, gonna, I'm not going to worry about it right now. Then I'm going to talk about the summary. So on the next part, I'm going to talk about the summary so you can see what that's like. I'm going to add to this. I'll have a second video on this.